Hey there viewers, it's time for yet another collection update and thanks to the buy two get two sale that GameStop had last week I was able to make out like gangbusters But first for the collection update we have a game that I mentioned during my final set of videos for Ratchet and Clank Going Commando And that is Quest for Booty. Now I've made mention in the past that I was very hesitant on even buying this game because $15 for a three hour game is kind of overpriced, but then I realized I was going to buy the game eventually anyways because I am going to be doing all the Ratchet and Clank games so I might as well shell out the extra three bucks and get a physical copy of the game, mostly because you cannot always rely on the PlayStation Network in order to get your your digital downloads. Even more so recently, considering the hacking job that's been going on with PlayStation Network being down completely. You cannot always rely on a service to get your download, so I am so glad I got that ahead of time. Next up we have... The original Ratchet & Clank game, for those who do not know, when I was originally LPing this game, I was simply renting it, and now I own it. So that means I now have all nine of the Ratchet & Clank games that are currently released. I say it that way because I don't technically count Heroes on the Move as a Ratchet & Clank game. Yes, it has Ratchet & Clank, but I don't consider it one of the games in the franchise. Kind of like how I don't consider Smash Brawl part of the Kirby franchise. Yes, Kirby's in the game, but it's not one of his game series. And then All for One, Ratchet Clank All for One has yet to be released yet. When that comes out, I'll probably buy that too. But so far, I have all nine games that have currently been released. Now next up, we have two more games that are kind of in the unknown platformer action-adventure genre that I am so famous for and that I really love. And they are Alter Echo and Virtual Quest. I haven't really know. I don't really know too much about either of these two games. However, I know they got fairly decent ratings, so hopefully they don't suck too badly. I am kind of interested in Virtual Quest more than Alter Echo. And then next up, we have a couple of RPG games that I kind of already know a little bit about. Back in high school, I was big in the RPG style genre kick, um, which is actually kind of why I'm playing a lot of these RP or a lot of these platformers now, kind of like Ratchet and Clank and Sly and all these other games. Back when I was in high school, I stuck mostly to RPG games, tactics, western, all that. And now that I'm buying video games now, I'm picking these things up. So we're gonna start off with a game that I mentioned before as one of my top ten games of all time. Dark Cloud 2. I simply love this game. I have not played the original yet, though, but I love Dark Cloud 2. Upgrading your weapons, going through dungeons, going into the past, planting stuff, and then going in the future and seeing the trees grow. Amazing. A little bit of scale to the butterfly effect, but not too much. But it is nice to see how things change when you go in the past and then the future. I am hoping that the original Dark Cloud has something similar to that. We shall see. Next up, we have Dragon Quest VIII, a game that I didn't really get to play much of, because like I said, I was playing all these RPGs back in high school, so I got maybe an hour and a half into the game, and that's about it. Excuse me. Back then, you only were able to rent games five days at a time from Blockbuster, so yeah, I didn't really have a Gamefly membership at the time. Still, I am glad to have this game now. I'm able to play through it, and now I can hopefully beat this game, finally. Next up we have a game that I haven't even played yet, but I do know gameplay footage from. Back when I was in high school, I had an ex-girlfriend who had this very same game, so I used to watch her play the game. One of the areas that I know fairly well is the mine, and that's about it. I don't know how far that is in the game, but I do know about the mine, and I'm very interested in playing this. I do know that there are a couple of sequel to this game for the Wii, but I want to play this one first just to get a feel for how the Crystal Chronicles work because it's an entirely different spin-off than the Final Fantasy games. And then finally for the RPG games of this collection, we have Gladius, a gladiator-style tactical RPG game. Another one I played back in high school that I didn't really get a finish, but I simply loved it. I wouldn't really consider it a rare game, but I have been on the lookout for it for quite some time, and I'm finally glad to have it. Great tactical RPG game. And with that, we are now on to Devil May Cry Chronicles, which is actually all three 
of the original PS2 games of Devil May Cry. And the discs are already, already falling out. We have Devil May Cry 1, Devil May Cry 3, and the 2-disc Devil May Cry 2. I don't really know too much about the 2-disc. I think that it's the exact same game on both discs, but with different characters. Maybe a little bit different story, something like that. Now, I have made mention of the Devil May Cry games in... Things falling off. I have made mention of the Devil May Cry games in the past, but I haven't actually played them. Uh, when they actually first came out, like I said, I was in the RPG kick, so I didn't really play games like this. I knew about it. I saw gameplay footage of it. But I never really played it. You can actually see my reflection in this game. Hello. Now, when I was actually playing Darksiders, I made many mentions of Devil May Cry, how a lot of people actually consider if a game is a hack and slash with upgrades, it's a God of War ripoff. No, Devil May Cry came first. And I'm still on the lookout for Devil May Cry 4. Next up, we do have a bit of a rare game in Futurama. Very hard game to find. Ended up paying 20 bucks for this, and in fact, even though I paid that much, no manual, it didn't even come with the original cover art, I had to print this cover art off. Which really sucks, but it is a good game. And I am kind of debating whether or not I'm going to do an LP of this, because it does kind of fall into the type of games that I would do. It's got great voice actors, Billy West. It's got some action-adventure, it's got some platforming, it's got a lot of things you can collect, it's got upgrades... But here's the problem. It breaks one of the major rules I have on my channel, and that is no movie-based or no television-based video games. So I would have to break one of my major rules in order to LP this game. Kind of a toss-up on whether or not I'm going to actually do that. Still the same, I am glad I finally have this game. Been looking for it forever. Next up we have a game that isn't technically mine, it's kind of my niece's. I got this game for her when she came up this weekend. But she's down back in Alabama again, so she can't really play it. But Harvest Moon, Another Wonderful Life. Even though it's kind of for her, it's still technically a decent game. I have played a lot of the Harvest Moon games for the Game Boy Advance. Haven't played any of them for the GameCube, though. But I still have a basic knowledge of how these games work. When she comes back up here to North Carolina, I'll give her the game, though. Because I actually did give her my GameCube as well. Next up, Katamari Forever. I love these games, and aside from the very first one, I actually have all the Katamari games. And what's interesting about this is I believe it is a, not really a collection, but it has all the maps of the other Katamari games. No, oh, excuse me. It's only It only has a few original maps. So in a sense, it is kind of a collection. It's got, it's got them upscaled in HD, though, which is kind of nice. The only real difference I've noticed is it's got two features. One, you can now jump over platforms instead of having to roll slowly over them, which is a big help. And two, in addition to having the King of the Cosmos, you also have the Robo King of the Cosmos, which adds a little bit extra to it. I don't really know what else, though. I mean, they seem kind of the same for the most part. And now we're onto the games that I'm sure a lot of you are going to be happy that I now have. Okami. I just saw a smile on a lot of your faces from that. Yeah, I actually played this game, for, I'd say, in 2006. But I didn't really get that far. For whatever reason, the game just did not interest me that much. I figure I'm going to give this game a second chance. I bought it. So now I'll be able to play. I actually still have the saved data on my com Or, not on my computer on my memory card. So, who knows, maybe I'll eventually LP this game as well. We'll see. I'm only two hours in the game, so it could still technically be a blind playthrough, especially considering how long the game is. Now, before I show these next games, I should make it quite clear that my channel is primarily, first and foremost, above all rules, a blind playthrough channel. I do all my games first time through only. I don't do LPs of games that I've already played through in the past. With that being said, the Jack and Dexter Trilogy plus Jack and Dexter The Lost Frontier. Jack and Dexter 1, I simply love. 
favorite of the entire series. Jack 2, I know this one gets a lot better reviews, a lot more people like this one than the other games. It's alright, I mean, it's a decent game, but I still like the first one more. It's an alright game, though. I just didn't really care for the whole driving around aspect of it, and how it kind of lost out on a lot of the platforming elements. Jack 3, I ended up giving up on. I never really finished the game. Right around the time where you're racing around the track... Excuse me. That's the point where I gave up on the game. I'm not a fan of racing games. In fact, if, you, if you've watched any of, any of my Ratchet & Clank videos, you know that each time I have a hoverboard race or any other sort of race, I kind of get a little bit disinterested. So that kind of killed it for me when they had that in Jack 3. Jack and Dexter, The Lost Frontier, I have yet to play yet. And then Jack X Racing, I, like I said, I hate racing games. And then Just Daxter for the PSP, I don't own a PSP, so I can't really play that or judge that. Now, like I said, I don't do LPs on games that I've already played in the past. However, as Charles Dickens once said, never say never. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And then finally, last but not least, I've mentioned this on my channel not too long ago, and if you've actually watched my early LPs, Adventures of Darwin, Little King Story, games like that, you know that I really love the Pikmin games. I now own them. Again, like I said for Jack and Dexter, I don't do games that I've already LP'd, however, never say never. If a Pikmin 3 comes out... We'll see. Alright, we'll see. But I am so glad to have these games. What's interesting about Pikmin 2 is that this is a very, very rare game. In fact, I ended up having to pay $35 for this. The most I've paid for any used game ever. And what sucks even more about it... For $35, I didn't even get a manual. In fact, I didn't even get the original cover art. I had to print this off, as you can see, from these edges right there. Every time I have to print off a cover for a video game, I get that little distortion on the paper. Really sucks. Really sucks I had to pay that much for it and didn't even get the manual. But again, I love the Pikmin games. I am so glad to be able to play through them again. And that is it for the collection update. Until next time, adios.